So uh, when we talk about the tax bill, or what will soon be the tax law, everyone pretty much says that it's priced in. But you point out that what started out as a corporate tax cut has now very much become about individuals. Has that part of the tax bill been priced into the market, you think? Well, first of all, we see from today's equity markets that by and large it really had been. I think you know, you've come off of the, the if you look at the, the baskets of, of stocks, you know, high tax companies, domestically oriented companies, you know, they had really, I think that those, though they had bottomed around the summer and likewise over the past, really the past month, they've gotten back to about their pre, you know, around the, the euphoria type levels since the election. So what we see is the equity markets may have had it priced in, but I'm not really sure the economy quite does yet. Stock uh, estimate forecasts do yet, and I think probably the big story of the day is that the bond markets, you know, clearly did not have it priced Why is in. That? Uh, you know, I, th I think that, that for one, just the equity markets are historically known for being a little bit more positive, a little more bullish, a little more euphoric. Um, you know, I think that's probably one of the key factors. But, but you, you, make, you, know, you hit the nail on the head is that, that this ended up being a bit more reflationary than was originally forecast. If you see what went into the committee, you know, given that it did actually become a bit more of a cut for consumers. Um, it is it is surprising that any market would not see. I mean, I knew it was going to pass today, so I'm a little surprised <laughs> that uh, bond traders didn't. But, wait, but but seriously, when you look at the bill mm -hmm. and you talk about reflationary impact, because to be honest, most of the people we talk to, they're like, mm, maybe it'll be a one-year sugar high at best. Maybe it'll add the two Fed tenths included. of a percent. The Fed doesn't see much. What do you see in the bill specifically that you're like, yeah, this could add some juice, add some reflationary power to the economy? I think just really simply put, if you take an economy that is already oper operating at pretty near full employment, even without this bill, we've been well on track to see an unemployment number going from right now at about a 17-year low down to something that even has a three-handle. If you enact any sort of fiscal stimulus, that's just invariably going to lead to some sort of wage pressures. Now, thus far, a lot of secular forces have kept the wage growth um, you know, in check. You know, globalization, um, you know, price discovery mechanisms, Technology. various websites, uh, automation. But at the same time, you know, we don't believe that the Phillips curve is dead. It's just been rained in. It's been flattened by these factors. But if you look at a lot of the other leading indicators, in addition to the unemployment rate, um, the, the National Federation of Independent Business, um, that's kind of a mouthful, uh, that survey tends to have about a two-year lead on, on wage growth. And what that suggests is that wage growth, even before this legislation passed, was already somewhat baked in. And likewise, you know, average hourly earnings is it's below what the Fed worries about, but it's been trending upwards. We have some factors that are already trending upward, and then you do give it the, the sugar high that you speak to. Mm -hmm. you know, that would probably suggest that despite the fact that you know, the CPI was pretty tame last week, Janet Yellen has said she's not really concerned about inflationary forces, but you know, one of the you know, really contrarian calls that we've been making is that you know, we do feel that if there's any risk for 2018, it is that you could have some slight concern of things overheating mm -hmm. a little bit and maybe even having a little bit of uh, an inflation scare. So we've said that the equity market has priced tax reform and the implications, the bond market hasn't. What we've seen is that the 10 years by and large been anchored mm -hmm. this year. Where does the 10 year go then in order to price tax reform and the okay. ongoing inflation aspects of it. Well, likewise, yeah, I, I talked about some of the, the secular trends that have sort of kept inflation in check. Yes. Well, the 10 year also has some some trends anchors. that are really outside of anchors outside the United States. Probably the 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 the, the key place to look would be the, the bond yields in Europe. Yeah. That you know you see, you know, the Fed's been by and large pushing on a string as you know the, the, the longer end of the yield curve has been anchored or there's been a lid kept on it by the very low European yields. You're seeing good growth there. You're start I think that probably by mid next year there is a chance that those go up which you know, if you start to see uh, you know the long-term 10-year uh, you know, bond yields go up from say two and a half to closer to three percent then you know with equity markets already at, at high valuations mm. that could lead to some concern mm. complete topic change now kind of Bitcoin thoughts yeah. on Bitcoin at this moment what that represents for the broader market well I, I, with respect, I don't. I don't think there's a whole lot of implications for the broader market. I, I haven't personally invested in it. I, we, we're a value shop, and so everything we buy needs to have some sort of intrinsic value. Um, and yeah, Bitcoin doesn't qualify. It, <laughs> yeah, it, it, it doesn't. It, it doesn't generate cash. It doesn't generate uh, any income. You know, if I look at it as a as a, as a currency, um, I think it fails two key tests as either a store of value or a medium of exchange because of the high degrees of, of volatility. Now, I 
understand that there is a, a fixed number, and so a lot of libertarians out there have suggested that maybe this is a defense against uh, an inflation scare, which really no one's been talking a whole lot about, I, except aside from me mentioning it a minute ago. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, looking at it today, you know, I certainly can't say it's a bubble. Um, but you know, when I see an asset that's gone up 1,700 percent in a year and it doesn't produce cash, you know, if I if I go to the zoo and see a big cat with stripes, you know, it might not be a tiger, but it, it probably well, is. Seventeen thousand. <laughs> One thing we <laughs> have seen, and we talked about this earlier in the show, is that incredible speculative mania into yeah. companies that add crypto to their name or something. Does that tell you something about where we are in the cycle in terms of people's willingness to gamble, people's willingness to take risks, the likes of which we haven't seen much throughout this bull market? That's what I meant by the broader market, uh, by the way. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> the, yeah they're, they're, they're clearly, you know, there's been some froth in these areas. It does remind you, it, it can't not remind you of what we saw 20 years ago when you had, you know, dot com at the end yeah. of pretty much anything and things would rally. Um, and so there is some of that. And, and maybe what that says to the investors is you know, if you go by the old dictum, you know, be fearful when others are greedy, and if you know that's a sign of that, then maybe it does suggest that you know we might want to be a little bit more cautious across the board.